work for a well-known government agency that you may have heard of. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You've heard of it. But I have gaming information about the existence of... What's going on today, guys, and welcome to Eddie Studios. For those who haven't been here before, I do weekly videos with tips and tricks to help you be a better videographer. Lately, I've been doing a playlist on how to edit using your mobile device because it's super important to be able to edit your videos and to be able to edit them mobily really takes away a lot of limitations. So we're using PowerDirector to do this because it's the most powerful mobile video editor that I've ever come across and I just love it. I've been using it for three years and I'm sharing tricks with you guys. So if you haven't checked out any other videos and you're new to PowerDirector, I recommend you check out the rest of the playlist above and get familiar with PowerDirector before you come to this one because it's a little bit more complex. Today we're going to be blurring an object and showing you how to blur that object and then also blur it as it moves because that's a little tricky with PowerDirector, but we're gonna do that in this video. So to start off, we're in PowerDirector already and have our first clip in the timeline. So the clip you wanna use, go ahead and put it in the top layer of the timeline and then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is duplicate that layer underneath it. If you need to know how to get to this point, watch the previous videos that I've done on PowerDirector and you'll get here. To get that next layer in, we're gonna go the third down on the left-hand side to the Layers tab and hit Video and go find the video that we had and just add it in there. And once our video's in the timeline, we're gonna go ahead and click out here. You notice the video's smaller, the second video. We're gonna to wanna to make it the same size as the first video. Go and drag that out. And simple enough, we're dragged out. We're gonna go ahead and hit that first tab and we're gonna add our Gaussian Blur in here. So if you go under Effects and then slide over to Gaussian Blur, you're gonna go ahead and add that in. Then you're gonna hit it again because you wanna amp that way up. And you're not gonna see anything happen here because you have a second layer over the top of this layer. To see what happened, we're gonna to go to the second layer and we're gonna go over to our mask. And we're going to add an ellipse mask here. I find the ellipse mask is best for faces because faces are round. I'm going to size this way down and go ahead and size it down to fit around what you're trying to blur out. And as you can see, everything else is blurred except for what I'm fitting this around, which is the face of our interviewee here, Fred. We'll call him. I don't know who this Fred guy is because he's a mystery. What you're going to want to do to fix this is invert it. So we inverted it. Now we only see everything else and not Fred. And I'm gonna go ahead and feather this out a little bit. There we go. And so with this, we're gonna scroll through here and find where Fred decides to move. That's how we're gonna decide how to move this. Now before PowerDirector added keyframing in here, you had to split your clip and then manually move it. So now what you can do is come to the moment right before he starts moving, hit a keyframe. So that diamond on the right hand side, just tap it, that gives you a keyframe. We know it's stopped here. And then we're gonna go to where he stops moving. So he stopped moving, we, stop, we wanna go to right when he stops moving so that it keeps up with the motion. I'm gonna manually move the mask with my finger. And when I do that, it adds the second keyframe. We're gonna go ahead and scroll back so you can kind of see it keep up. See how the mask keeps up and moves with them. So we're gonna keep going here and then Fred moves again here. So right when he gets ready to turn his head, we're gonna add another keyframe. It's every time you wanna do a keyframe at the beginning of the movement to make sure the mask doesn't move between that last keyframe and now so that when you're keyframing the next shot, it's only moving from this moment forward. So it's got a steady movement. It's not going to go anywhere between these two keyframes. And then you're going on to this next keyframe. We're going way down here. And I'm going to go ahead and move this mask. And I'm even going to rotate the mask for this one since its head rotates some. So I'm going to go down and rotate. You could even resize it if you want. And the keyframes are going to track all of that. So if you resized it, it's going to change the size as it keyframes through. So we go here. And we just go back just to make sure it stays and you can change anything. You can uh, erase your keyframe. If you have the keyframe selected, you notice that a little minus comes up next to it. You can hit it and it erases the keyframe. You start right over. From here, he immediately goes back to the starting position. So we're going to just go ahead and scroll ahead to here. So we want right when he stops. And go ahead and move that again. Go ahead and rotate it. And I'm not going to size it up too much. I don't really need to size it up. 
and right there. So let's go ahead and scroll back through. Just make sure we've kept up with him the whole time. Oops, see it skips out for a second. I want to add another keyframe in here before he starts moving, like right there. So we're gonna add a keyframe in here. This will fix our problem by moving it here. And when I add that keyframe in, that kind of gives me yeah, there we go. So there's not a moment where we're missing Fred. But here you notice Fred leans towards the camera to shut it off. We'll add another keyframe in here. You can add as many keyframes as you want. Get one right here while he's still back. Keyframe that. And then moved forward. Now I'm just going to size it up basically and like move it over slightly. So let's go ahead. Rolling through it slowly, making sure we're not seeing any of Fred because he wants his privacy. All right, guys, so we've keyframed this pretty well, I believe. We have a fully blurred subject face, so you can't tell who he is because we're doing this as an interview setting. We're going to want to change Fred's voice here. So audio-wise, I'm going to mute this audio just so that we only have one audio running. So we're going to mute this one. Then we're going to go to our first track where the audio is running. Let's go to our audio tools. And since Fred's already a man, if we add the man voice, it'll give him that cool deep voice that you get in like a, a creepy interview where like the person doesn't want to be seen or heard from. So let's play it through and just have some fun with this. Let's see what it sounds like. I work for a well-known government agency that you may have heard of. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You've heard of it. But I have damning information about the existence of aliens. I have all the information in the documents right here. All right, I hope you guys really got use out of that and you feel confident in being able to blur an object in PowerDirector. If you have any added questions to how to do something that maybe wasn't covered about this subject, please leave comments below. Or if there's anything else you wanna learn how to do in PowerDirector, please leave comments about that as well because I'm still creating this series and I wanna cover some stuff that maybe are more common questions people have. That being said, the next video in this series is going to be how to create a split screen effect in PowerDirector and then adding some extra fun effects over the top of that because it's a little bit of a simple thing. And I do wanna add in some bonus material in there for you as well on a simple video like that. I'm looking forward to that. If you guys are enjoying these, please hit that like button. And if you wanna learn more and see that next video, subscribe to the channel because I got them coming out all the time, every week. Until next time, check out my video up top about the Osmo Pocket 2, which I'm shooting this whole video on, and I've got a video coming up on how to shoot with the Osmo Pocket 2, move it into PowerDirector, and edit right on your phone with it, because it's a great tool for using for mobile video. And on the bottom is going to be this playlist that I listed before, so you can keep watching the videos on this playlist and learn more about it. If you haven't subscribed, do that. I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to keep grinding here at Eddie Studios. Peace.